What's up, folks? We're back, man. We're back. Episode 10 of the Come Up Video Show. How are we doing, folks? Today is Tuesday. It's the first of the month. How are we feeling? How's everything doing? I hope you guys are doing well. Um, I'm excited to have another episode of episode 10, which is great. I didn't expect to, to get to episode 10 so quickly, but thank you to the guests who've made their, their way to the, to the podcast and talked about their work and taken the time of the day to talk to to us about their, their stuff. So today we have uh, another special guest who is Yasan Abuchi, who is a Palestinian American photographer currently residing in Maryland. Abuchi began his career in photography when he realized that he could t- use photography to tell a story of his people in the bridge and gap between his East and West identities. Specializing in landscape and street photography, Abushi offers a beautiful lens in, into the everyday life of the Palestinian experience. So let's bring on Abushi right in, talk to him, see what's up to. Yeah, son, how you doing, brother? Good, how are you? Good to good. meet you. Nice to meet you too, man. How, how's everything going? It's been pretty good. How are yourself? Good, man. Good. Uh, you know, it's the first of the month. Feels like yeah. this year went by pretty quickly. It did crazy quick, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's crazy. Like, like I said, it's September, and I remember when I was. Dude, I feel like I could like we lived March like it was yesterday when first yeah, COVID yeah, no, just it, hit, and then people were talking about that, and I'm just right. Like, yeah, just things things moved so fast. From oh, there's just a couple cases in the U.S. We don't have to lock down, and then. People started panicking and buying all the toilet paper. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> Dude, I've, exactly. It's 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 funny that you mentioned. It feels like that forever ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's funny though because I work at a grocery store. I work at a supermarket here in, in okay. Southern California, mm-hmm. and I was working at um at a restaurant up in uh here like in Southern California. Mm-hmm. And then we got laid off because of, of COVID, right? Obviously, we don't have indoor dining, so yeah. that killed the sales, and then. While that was going on, people were just like hoarding and buying stuff. And then luckily I started working at the grocery store once the whole mess thing right. happened. So everything's good. But that's good. Yeah. So what do, what do, how, how's COVID treating you? What are you doing to stay busy? Um, you know, I've been doing, I just started school two days ago. So I'm pushing through that. <laughs> that's a, a big commitment. And I'm also working part time for the National Park Service. Um, I make educational videos for them. Right. And then, you know, there's always that side hustle. Um, as an artist, I'm doing um, a lot of photography. I'm doing a lot of filmmaking and just trying to tell my story. Right. So like you mentioned, you live in Washington, D.C. That's right. How's that been for you? How's that experience? Um, you know, it's been it's been all right. Um, I moved. I'm originally from Annapolis, Maryland, which is about an hour away. And I moved to D.C. right outside of D.C. actually for school. Mm-hmm. Um, I go to the University of Maryland and i've been here for like three months i haven't really got that much time to explore especially since everything is closed but right, right. it's been fun so far right. i like it what's what's been a big difference or the biggest change that you had to um, adapt to you know to be honest i'm just uh i really really love uh, the diversity here mm-hmm. um i moved from a really really white pretty conservative town um and so here, everything feels much more welcoming. Um, mm-hmm. There's a lot more diversity in culture, food, language, and I've really been enjoying that. Mm-hmm. Like you mentioned, you're, you're a Palestinian American. Yeah. How, how's how's that been with um, with the whole Palestinian, um, you know, things going back in your country? How's that? Right. Well, you know, I think um, as a Palestinian American, there's always a lot of intergenerational trauma that we have to deal with. Um, For most Palestinians in America, we can say that our parents or our grandparents were refugees. Um, Mm -hmm. For those who don't know, just a tiny bit of context. Mm -hmm. And a very big nutshell is that um, in 1948, when the state of Israel was created, um, there was a mass exodus, a mass forced exodus of Palestinians. And they went all across the world. My parents ended up going to the U.S. from Jordan, um, 99, which is the year before I was born. And since then, you know, it's, it's, it's really similar to a lot of other shared um, immigrant experiences in America. You know, whether it's 
Black experience, Latino experience, we all grow up feeling marginalized. We all grow up having labels put on us, um, having our identities made for us. And so I think because of that, um, it just instills this sense um, of, or this desire to tell our own stories and to define our own identities before anyone else chooses to. Mm-hmm. So how, how about how you find your identity through photography? You know, for me, photography is one of my biggest forms of expression. I think that first off, when I meet someone and I tell them I'm Palestinian, they've either never heard of it or they've never heard anything good about it. And so to me, photography is a way to not only explain the Palestinian side of my identity, but to tell the story of my people, of their plight. Um, and just to, to bridge my, my Eastern and Western identities as a Palestinian American. And how, how, how have people reacted to that? Well, when people see you work and go, kind of get to know your story, you know, did people they connect? react really well. Yeah. Um, I think most people are really surprised because, you know, America as a mostly Christian uh, country, you know, they, they know about the places they hear about in the Bible, Nazareth, uh, Jericho, Hebron, Jerusalem. But a lot of them don't realize that these are real places that still exist today and people still live there. And that's in Palestine. Um, mm-hmm. And so when I'm like, yeah, I, uh, I took these pictures in Jerusalem or in heaven. Yeah, this is, where, uh, this is where Jesus died on the cross or this is where his mother was born. They're like, what? That's like, they, they kind of like, I feel like people here, they contextualize all those places as some sort of a fairy tale. When it, it's actually real places that still have a lived history. Right. right. Yeah. And that's the beautiful thing about, about photography too. It's like you, 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 hear the, you, you hear the stories, you read them. You see them in films and this, you know, dreamy world, but man, to actually right. see the photographs, yeah, it's it's like it's true, it's raw, it's still going on. What's been your favorite part of of, of being able to 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 share your story with photography? Is it telling your story? Is it showing people, you know, your culture? What's been the mm-hmm. your most favorite experience? You know, I think I think the best experience is that it's uh, led me to a lot of great adventures and friendships. Um, in Palestine, my favorite thing to do is to get on a bus or go on a taxi and get lost with my mm. And, you know, people there are so hospitable and generous. You know, you'll find so many people curious as to what this guy with the camera wants. What is he taking pictures of? Mm. You know, like, what, what's so special? And people will invite you over for dinner or for a cup of tea. And, you know, you'll get to tell stories. You'll get to share yours. And along the way, you'll just make a ton of different friends. I love how you mentioned that because that was, that was bring me to the next point. How are, how do people mm-hmm. react to the camera? Obviously, yeah. do do people do do you think when you have a camera in hand and you're in you know Palestine and you know your home country, right? Are you able to blend in with the crowd or people? So do, see, that's people, the thing. I, I don't blend in. <laughs> yeah, or people do see you like, hey, he's an outsider, but you know, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so um, I definitely don't blend in in Palestine because you know having a big chunky camera around that definitely like marks you as a foreigner. Um, people either think of me as a tourist or a journalist or something like that. And so people will walk up to me or kids will walk up to me like yelling words in English and I'll be like, you know, I'll, and I'll speak back to them in Arabic, be like, what's up? <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and that'll always usually surprise them. And that's always a great con- conversation starter. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. When, when you're in Palestine photography, what are, what, are you, what are you looking for? Is it portraits or, in, or what, are you, um, what are you mostly trying you to know, cultivate? I'm, I think I'm trying to tell the stories that aren't shown in mainstream media. I'm trying to uh, display how people are affected by military occupation, how Israeli apartheid um, affects all Palestinians living in Palestine, not just the West Bank, not just Israel proper, and Gaza as well. Um, Most people are just not informed at all about the conflict, and it's really unfortunate. So I try and shed light on the human side of Palestinians, because so often in the media, they're demonized and they're dehumanized into this other that you really can't rationalize any sympathy for. And so that's what I'm trying to do. Mm-hmm. So your, your parents, uh, they, were, they were born in Palestine? So my parents, my grandparents were refugees. My grandparents were born in Palestine. And in 1948, when the state of Israel was created, over 750,000 Palestinians were either forced um, to leave in a mass exodus or they were ethnically cleansed. My grandparents managed to escape to Jordan. My dad was born in Jordan and my mom was born in Syria. Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, from there, they lived their lives as refugees. They were really fortunate enough to be given citizenship um, as Jordanians and Syrians, respectively. And they were able to go to school. Mm -hmm. Eventually, my dad ended up going to college in Spain. My mom stayed in Jordan. And eventually, they met and uh, decided to come to the States. Nice. And what, what, when, you're first, when your parents first came to the States, where did, where did they settle at first? Uh, Baltimore. Baltimore. Okay. Yeah. Um, they were they were hustling really hard towards the beginning. They uh, my dad was working twenty four seven. So was my mom. And you know how it is. They don't really know the language that well. So you know, figuring out things like paperwork. I grew up trying to always like translating things for them. You know, yeah. uh, being the translator at like PTA oh conferences. That's yeah. that's that's pressure, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's pressure. That's pressure. That's pressure. It's uh, it's what you got to do. How are your parents doing now? I mean, I, I feel like I relate to you a ton because yeah. my yeah, parents yeah. I mean, were it's, born. It's a shared immigrant experience. Yeah. yeah, my parents were born in Honduras. They came here. My, my dad first came here and he had to hustle and work. And 20 years later now, man, my parents are stable. Thankfully, we have, you know, yeah. own business and we're able to, you know, have our own, you know, support for our own self. How are your parents doing from now? You know, fortunately enough, they've also been able to build a pretty stable life. And, you know, right. I think the, the biggest sign of that is, uh, you know, my, my personal uh, luck. You know, I've been able to move out on my own, get a great job, go to school. Um, and so have my other siblings. And so, you know, we've been able to live a life that was much, much easier than our parents. And so I couldn't think of a better sign of success than that. Man, I 100%, bro. Like I mentioned to you off, off there. Yeah, I mentioned up there. I was back home for a couple of days, and man, just to see how thankful we are as, 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 as sons of immigrants is just beautiful. Yeah. See, it puts things in perspective to see. Definitely, Fuck. it's it always humbles you. Yeah, it does because yeah. it puts you like, man, like my parents have done so much for me to put me in, to me to be in this position. I take advantage of it. I have Definitely. to do what I have to do in order to create these opportunities. Right. What have you done for yourself? Obviously, you mentioned that you you go to school, you mm -hmm. moved out. What else are you trying to do in order to, to better yourself as a human being? You know, I think uh, after high school, I, I took a gap year and I traveled around and I worked some. And the biggest lesson I've learned so far professionally is that the number one most important thing is who you know and the connections that you have, because that's what's gotten me where I am. And so I'm always trying to seek out opportunities, like every single day, I'll be looking on Craigslist for gigs. I'll be looking on Facebook Marketplace for things to resell you know it's just it's that that hustle mindset where you're always trying to look for the next way you can step up um lately i've been trying to get into modeling so you know it's just it's always trying to find that next uh opportunity that can help you reach your goals whatever it may be mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um how has photography helped you as, as, a, as a as a visionary person where are you trying to obviously like i mentioned you, you're trying to do these side hustles Right. How does photography, how do you see yourself as a photographer down the road? How's photography going to be part of your life once you get your degree so, and you're able to, you know, have right. a stable life for yourself? Photography for me has really helped me uh, build confidence as an artist. And it, it took a really long time to, to actually, you know, have that confidence to call myself an artist because for a while I just thought, you know, it's just photography. It's taking pictures. It doesn't really count. But, you know, um, ever since... The past two years, I was I've been taking it way more seriously, and I've been able to be featured in a couple galleries and shows. And you know, seeing the reception and seeing the way people react to it has uh, given me even more motivation to do more. Mm -hmm. I think in the future, I'd like to be featured in more galleries and exhibits. I'd like to be able to tell the same story to more people and uh, just expand more on that. Tell us about that gallery experience. How's that been? You know, it's it's been pretty good. They've all been really short, temporary shows so far. Um, but, you know, I had the chance to attend and meet a lot of the people who came to see my work. And it was amazing. It was amazing because, you know, I, you know, I'd just be like watching in the corner, um, <laughs> them not knowing that it was, it's me who took the pictures and I'll just like un anonymously watch their reactions. And, you know, it's, it's really nice. It's really sweet. Okay. And is there any current projects that you're working on and hoping to share to the world too? Um, right now, I'm putting things a bit on the back burner while I creatively readjust. I think um, I'm at a big point in flux right now where I just started school. COVID has messed everything up. <laughs> um, I was because I was supposed to be in Palestine this summer uh, working uh, as a photographer, but that didn't work out. 
because the airports are closed. Okay. Um, Tell us about that. Yeah, I was, I was supposed to be working in Palestine um, for the small nonprofit teaching environmental science. And then as a side thing, I'd also be traveling around and taking pictures. Oh, beautiful. Um, hopefully I can get to do that next summer. But, you know, uh, the pandemic came out of nowhere and the airport shut down. And so I had to quickly adapt and find something here. Yeah, you had to readjust and do something differently. Yeah. What do you um, think these images were been published that if or the ones like you've been in past and you did your man, thing? you know, I have I have a lot of big dreams. You know, the I think the top one that uh, a lot of us photographers trying to aspire for, especially those of us who travel, is National Geographic, mm. um, because <laughs> you know, they they have they have this following where people are so interested in learning about different cultures and different experiences, and they're, they're invested in it as well. Um, really, I'd, I'd just be able, the, the places I've been published so far are those with a niche audience that like love Palestine and they're, they're really into Palestine, but I'd like to be able to bring Palestine to those uh, who aren't familiar with it, to those who don't know much about it, who couldn't even point it on a map. I want to give those people a first impression on my people. Mm -hmm. Personally, I, I, I love culture. I love learning about cultures. What can you tell us about uh, about Palestinian culture and food. Food is amazing. Do you, do you, um, I mean, I think we all yeah. love food, right? What's, yeah, yeah. what's a typical... Man. Typical well, you food? know, Palestinian food is really diverse. Um, Palestine, you know, in, in, the, in the one country, you can find uh, coastal towns, you can find desert, you can find mountains, you can find lakes. So there's a lot of different um, cuisine, but it, it centers a lot around vegetables and nuts and meat so i don't know you know there's, there's some more basic things that i'm sure you're familiar with things like just like the run-of-the-mill falafel and hummus um, <laughs> yeah yeah um that, that's more across the region but my favorite food um from palestine would probably have to be maklube which is basically it's called maklube which means upside down and you cook this rice cauliflower chicken and potato dish in a pot and then you bring another pan to the pot and you're supposed to flip it upside down Okay. And take the pot off. Um, and that's why it's called uh, upside down and maklube. Maklube. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds so delicious right now. Yeah. Yeah. What else are you trying to accomplish with, with your work? Um, with my work, you know, I'm just, I, I want to change the impression of Palestine. You know, I want to give it a better connotation and I want more people to be invested in its development. And so that's where I want my storytelling to go. But I also am really interested in the intersections of photography and my other passion, which is environmental science, which is what I'm doing in school. I'm really interested in environmental racism specifically, which is how um, black and brown communities are disproportionately affected by climate change and by pollution. You know, um, here in the DMV, there's a lot of communities where um, it's very intentional that all the oil refineries, all the chemical plants are put where the black and brown people live. And because of that, they have higher rates of cancer, they have higher rates of uh, diabetes, things like that. It's just, it, it leads to unhealthy communities. And mm -hmm. there's a very clear reason behind that. Um, so in the future, I'd like to do more work about environmental justice, environmental racism. And I'd like to document that through the medium of photography. I'd say, um, you know, environmentalism is the passion and photography is is the medium to to deliver that oh well, that's beautiful that's that's yeah. that's said very beautiful and i love that too because it's obviously what you love but you're able to dock it's it's like combining the best of both worlds exactly exactly yeah so they come in the best awards I mean, obviously you love the environmental science but you also it's like putting the vision into into reality right what what also um with your biography work what what what, what kind of work do you do is it mostly um, so it's mostly educational things. Uh, so the, the point of my job this summer is it's, it's called an interpretive outreach assistant. And so what that means is, in a nutshell, I'm supposed to help make the DMV, DC, Maryland, Virginia's area, like natural areas, more accessible to minorities. Because, um, you know, people often think, especially us, like in people of color, we'll think like, you know, things like hiking, uh, snowboarding, skiing, going out in the water, those are white people things, you know, they're not really 
things that we do. And you know, I, I want to change that. And and my the the people I work for want to change that. You know, they want to make it more equitable because here in the DMV, the the largest uh, minority group by far is Hispanics, and they. Uh, so the reason my job was created, interesting story, was a couple of years ago at this one park, they found that like some 90% of the tickets given out at the park were to Hispanics. And they couldn't figure out why until they realized that none of the signs in the park were in Spanish. So, you know, like things like no fishing allowed here, or you need a, a license to put your boat here, things like that. It was all in English. And so um, you know, a lot of the Hispanic community wouldn't be able to understand that. And so they'd get ticketed more frequently. And so suddenly, um, you know, the, the community here, they had a big uh, epiphany where they're like, whoa, we're not, we're not serving this part of the community as they should be served. And so since then, a lot of work's been done. And we're really just trying to focus on um, now with COVID digital content. So I've been making a lot of content in English and Spanish. I don't speak Spanish, but um, my coworker does. And so we create videos together that focus on teaching environmental science, nature safety, um, just how to enjoy the outdoors. I love it. I mean, it seems like you're, you're really about the, the culture, the people. Absolutely. Giving back to the community. Absolutely. Giving back to, to, to your culture. And I feel like yeah. I, I relate to you in, in a certain way because I love to do the same thing. Obviously, it feels like I feel like I've known you for a while now, and I'm just talking about you and getting to know your story. Yeah, yeah. Well, if, I'm, uh, if I'm ever in LA, man, I'll be sure to hit you up. I love yeah. California. Yeah, I, I, I never been to 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 that part of, of the country. Oh, for real? Yeah. My dad was in. Man, where did my dad go? I think my dad went to 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 Washington DC, and he loved it. Really? I have a cousin going out there too, to because she's in the military. And I don't right. know. I haven't talked to her, spoken to her in a while, but yeah, it seems like it's it's a fun area. Yeah, it is pretty fun. For me, though, I'm definitely, uh, I'm, I'm in love with California. I've been there a couple times. Um, <laughs> what part of Cali? What part of Cali? All of it. <laughs> okay. Mostly, mostly like Southern Cali and the coast, but like I've, uh, I've been through, so in high school, um, I drove from here to California and back with a couple friends mm. um, just to celebrate graduating. But I just, I don't know. I feel like California, it's, it's where the artists are. It's like the, the mindsets there, the attitudes, it's just, it's happier. Yeah. It's more beautiful. Yeah. The, the weather's always nicer. I'm not a person who likes the cold and the winters here are rough. <laughs> They're rough, huh? Yeah. 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 Um, but the protest in DC, have you been able to photograph that or are you not really yeah, interested yeah, in actually, taking part I, of that? Um, um, Shortly after George Floyd died, there were a lot of organized protests happening all over DC. And it was insane, the, the kind of responses that um, our government had. We saw like, there were tons of different military vehicles. There were like, they brought out the, the National Guard and they put this, this huge fencing around uh, Lafayette Park, which is the park right in front of the White House. And, you know, it, it really felt dystopian because people were out here marching for, for something that shouldn't even be political to say black lives matter is literally like the the most it shouldn't be political to say that this person's life matters and it was crazy there was a lot of tension there were a lot of counter protesters there were people being tear gassed i only went out one night um and i managed to get a couple photographs it was stormy there was lightning but yeah i've been able to document that a little bit i'm invested in those kinds of stories all right Thank you so much, man. Anything you want to say to the, to the people? Anything that you're working on? Anything that you just want to um, put out there? You know, if uh, in the future, y'all can follow me at Yezan Photo. That's Y-A-Z-A-N Photo. Mm -hmm. um, I'll keep you all posted about all my projects there. I have yeah. a couple yeah. things uh, lined up right now, but it's all long term. So Yeah, I definitely will provide a, a, a link to, the, to your sure. stuff so people can check it sure. out. Before yeah. we end off, I want to hand in, in a happy quick note. So we're going to have uh, some quick fire questions for you and just whatever yeah. comes to mind, man, just, okay. just spit it out. Okay, let's do uh, it. Favorite food? Favorite food? Uh, burritos. Ooh, okay. Um, favorite? Pupusas, actually. Okay, even better. Yes. I like that. <laughs> even better. Uh, let's see. Uh, favorite city? Favorite city? Uh, Monterey. Bro, I love Monterey. It's so um, great. Favorite camera to shoot with? Favorite camera? Well, <laughs> if I had money, that answer would be different. Yeah. Um, the favorite camera I, I shoot with is the one I always have with me. Okay. Um, yeah. 
Favorite color? Favorite color, olive green. Okay. And three words that describes you? Um, adventurous, spontaneous, caring. There you go. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, man, for taking the time of your day for talking yeah. to us. We're going to provide, uh, yeah, yeah, man. We're going to provide the link to your stuff there so people can check it out. And uh, yeah. we'll stay in touch and keep doing your thing, man. And I'm excited for your future. Thanks, man. Awesome. Man. Likewise, man. I'm excited to see where you're headed.